Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are gonna be beginning the narration and character voicing for the side story, A Death in Shun Fen. And as always here at the beginning, we shall ask the question, do you need to read through and understand any prior side story before heading into this one? And the simple answer would be, I would recommend it in this case, cause the prior side story to this one was Vernal Winds, released pretty much just a handful of weeks ago, uh, as of this recording, and it very extensively covered uh, throughout its narrative, the past, present resolution, conclusion, and everything about Kubai up until this point, and why she is now uh, seemingly roaming through Yan instead of being in the city of Yumen, where Vernal Winds was taking place in. So it will give you pretty much the understanding of why she is now where she is, and how she is as a character as well. And I would also recommend it, because it is a pretty dope side story. <laughs> it was pretty good. Anyway, with that out of the way, let us proceed into today's, uh, today's vignette side story. So then, like I said, this is a vignette side story, uh, which means we are not going to be doing the usual here, where I do uh, story, stage description, enemy description, yada yada. We are go just going to be doing these story bits here as they are in the menu. And for today's first part, we shall be covering our first three, which is number one, Afraid to Return Home, number two, Courtyard Valley, and number three, Neither Gods Nor Demons. And uh, this is a very step-by-step uh, -step story. This is not individual side stories as some vignette side stories tend to be. This is a continuous narrative throughout each part. So then, with all of that out of the way, let us begin with our first part, Afraid to Return Home. Mom, is that going far away again? For how long this time? The snow and ice upon the river are about to melt. The rain this year has been just right, and it doesn't seem like there will be a drought or a flood. The new re reclaimed land upstream isn't a whole lot, but it should be enough to grow rice for the family to eat. Mom, can you try talking Dad out of it, so he can set aside his business? I don't want new clothes or beautiful jewelry. I just want us to have an ordinary family life. That's what's most important. I'm kind of scared. From a poor village to a prosperous town, from green saplings to a field of weeds. Straw shoes traverse a thousand li, from tall mounts and vast lakes comes one's home. <sighs> There's a cliff up ahead. Damn it! I'm really not gonna get away this time. Don't panic. You can't afford to lose your cool. Even if you can't win in a fight, there should be enough traps along the way to make her eat it. When I manage to catch her, I'm gonna need to teach her a hard lesson for daring to look down on me. Tired of running yet? How did you... Stay back! You look young, but you've got a hefty bag of tricks. Did the one who taught you to hunt ever tell you that traps meant for beasts won't hold a man? Besides, aren't you worried that you'd land yourself an extra charge if someone were to fall into one of your traps? Intentional damages? What a joke. Intentional damage? That's nothing. I've got a rap sheet. Uh, too long to list. So what you're telling me is, if I strike you down here, then your death would be deserved? That's right. I mean, no, definitely not. You stay away from me. See this bag of explosives here? Come one step closer and I pull the trigger. No matter how good you are at Kung Fu, I'll take you down with me. <laughs> Alright, I'll stay put then. You answer my question. Don't think you're gonna get anything out of me. How did you come to know that band of robbers over in that cave? Huh. Come to know them. I'm their leader. You might have made short work of my boys, but don't get cocky. I swear I'm gonna avenge them. Leader, at your age? 
Oh, not a problem with that. Go ask every village within Ten Li and see who hasn't heard of the fearsome Feng Xiaoxi. You better be scared to death if you knew the terrible things I've done. <laughs> Ridiculous. Twelve hours earlier? Xiaoxi! Boss! What's going on? Are enemies looking for trouble? Am I finally gonna get to fight someone? Can you bring me along this time? Damn it, all the guys who went to human somehow pissed off a she devil. She's been rampaging through our men on her way here. It's too late to pack your stuff, just start running. What are you talking about? Just one woman? You guys look pretty tough when we were showing our moves before, so how come you can't even beat a lone woman? Shut up! Cut the crap, where's the burden beast you were in charge of? Um, I sold it. You sold it? Weren't you the one who told me to take it to get something to eat? You dumbass, I told you to ride the burden beast into town and trade in the gems we looted. And you sold off the burden beast too? That bag of bag, uh, Those bags of rocks. The butcher didn't even know what those things were. You saw our burden beast was pretty sturdy, so he gave me a good price. Half in cash, the other half in jerky. You little... <laughs> How long have you been stuck in these mountains? What's the point in raising a stupid burden beast anyway? It ate more than us, and who knows when it might have attracted another tusk beast over. Mother, why did I ever pick a little shit like you? You're gonna be the death of me. Why all the... What's a kid doing here? Uh, who, who the hell are you? Also, very quickly, the word he used, the man used over there, uh, Bade, or uh, the combo of words he used there, pretty much is an equivalent from what I found out to, uh, to damn it or fuck. <laughs> very simple. Anyway. No wounds. I guess you weren't involved with what happened in human. I know Shenkai Zhong's depravity well, but I never expected them to get a little kid involved. Looks like there really is no limit to how low these people will stoop. I have no idea what you're talking about. Hey, let me cut you a sweet deal. I'll let you off the hook for taking out my boys for the time being. Step aside and I'll pretend I never saw you. Then we'll each go our way. I didn't give you my... I didn't give you permission to leave. I told you, stay back! Last warning, I've got explosives! The boy feels only a gust of wind blowing past him. The cloth bag in his arms is ripped apart. Beast jerky and various knickknacks fall to the ground. Among the knickknacks is a protective talisman carved from a wooden plaque, strung on a thick iron key. Painted upon it in conspicuous vermilion brush strokes are the characters Mushan Village. A talisman from Mushan? Give it back! Is this the key to your home? What's it to you? A kid with a family to go back to should not be running ar around like this. You're still young, so it's not your fault you don't understand the people you've gotten mixed up with. But you at least should be able to tell good from evil. Even if you weren't a part of their plot, if their accomplices ever came knocking on your door, do you know what would happen to you? Who are you to lecture me on good and evil? I could also take you to the authorities, and you could explain yourself there. Though, that would be a little troublesome for me as well. I'll take you home, and let your family sort things out. No way. I'm not going back. Over my dead body. That's not for you to decide. The boy pulls a short knife from his waist. He extends his arms out straight, and the tip of the knife shakes uncontrollably. D don't make me do this. A real man's not scared of death. How can he just bow his head and surrender? I'm not going with you, no matter what. Kill me if you have what it takes. Very well. Though the woman is clearly two meters away from him, the moment her voice rings next, next to his ear, the same side of his body goes numb. 
Before he can react, a cold blade is already pressed against his throat. So, you were afraid of death after all. Good, that means you're not a complete idiot. There will always come a time when a man must answer for his words and actions. Anyone can say stupid things, but not everyone has fortune on his side. What? What do you want from me? Show me the way. I'm taking you home. This is the last town before the mountains, and there is only one inn to be found. The place is not particularly spacious, and the two occupy a table in the corner. The moment the boy's rump lands on the chair, his gaze starts darting around left to right, causing the patrons at the next table to look over. Jubai gently places her sword on the table. No one can save you. I know, I know. Stop pulling that thing out to threaten people for no reason. They have been traveling for two weeks. One chases, the other flees. One is angered, the other covers. Yet through this, they formed a tacit understanding of sorts. Head due north from this town, pass through a deserted forest and you'll see a river at the north northernmost end. On the other side of on the other side is a mountainous area, and there's only one way in. Just follow the road and it'll take you there. There should be a few villages in the mountains, but I've heard some have relocated over the years. Can't say for sure if the Mushan village you're looking for is still there. How much longer do you think it'll take? The mountain roads are harder to traverse. Even if you try to rush it, it'll probably still take a week. Alright, spring is coming. The weather is starting to warm up and beasts will be on the move. Be careful if you're in a hurry. Appreciate it. You told me you left home to become an adventurer, but it turns out you haven't made it far from home. At first I thought you were deliberately leading me the wrong way. Well, the Zhengshu is big, and I barely just set out on my journey before I ran into you. Besides, I'm not stupid. If I led you to some uninhabited wilderness, wouldn't we both starve to death? Even if I was trying to get away, I'd come up with a better idea. You sure know how to handle yourself. Let's eat first. Who knows when next we'll be able to have a good meal after we leave town. Order whatever you like. Anything? You're paying? I don't have much on me, so if I end up not having enough to cover it, I'll leave you behind to do dishes. <laughs> you jest, my friend. A small eatery like this only has enough offerings to sate your hunger. hunger. Uh, you better not expect me to hold back. Hand me the menu. I want this one, this one, this one. Actually, give me one of everything. Uh, excuse me, young sir, are you sure the two of you can? Xiao Shi starts writing on a table with tea. Uh, huh? I've been kidnapped. <gasps> Get help. Are you done yet? Almost. Let's go with this for now. Okay, alright. Where are you going? To the washroom. What, are you gonna follow me? <laughs> Don't try any funny business. That kid just signaled me that he's been kidnapped. I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary when those two walked in. I thought they were just siblings. I have no idea what's going on. Are they inside right now? <sighs> that woman wouldn't follow me here, right? <laughs> Keep dreaming, if you think you can catch me. What awful luck. So much for the Shanghai Zhang. I thought I was joining a pretty awesome gang, but I ended up getting taken out by one woman. 
And now I'm running for my life here. Not make my... Didn't make any money, didn't learn Kung Fu, and even the bag of jerky I got out of it is gone now. Feng Xiaoxi sits down on the cold, hard ground. He curses twice, but that sound is overpowered by his stomach growling. A young man wandering the Zhenghu, Zhenghu, the world of Kung Fu, his growling belly empty, the sky is high and the clouds distant, nothing around him but vast emptiness. I should have had a couple of mouthfuls of food before running off. Where am I supposed to go now? I told you, you only get three strikes. How did you... My patience has limits. Why won't you just leave me alone? If I leave you alone in the wilderness, you'll die. So what if I die? What do you care? My whole life nobody's ever given me a damn if I live or die. Why should others care about a life that you don't don't yourself want? What the hell do you know? You've never experienced a life of wandering ever since you were a kid, living by yourself with nobody to rely on. <laughs> Stop being all pretentious. How could a powerful swordswoman like you, you possibly understand? <laughs> The boy turns around, only to realize that he is not the only hungry creature in the woods. From the tree's dusky, mottled shadows, a tusk beast slowly emerges. The tusk beast's blood-red eyes flicker like candles in the dark night, its low-pitched growls making the grass and trees quiver and cover. Uh, help? Don't move. I am not. Don't make a sound. Don't run, and don't turn your back on it. Don't panic. Make your way toward me slowly. Get behind me. I can't. Careful now. Perhaps due to the loose fallen leaves be beneath his feet, perhaps due to his nerves, the boy staggers and falls to the ground. The Tusk Beast catches the scent of his fear, keenly seizing the opportunity to hunt. It rushes out at almost the same time as the Swordswoman. On the battlefield, the claws of the Tusk Beast should have been no threat at all to the sword. Had there not been a child in need of protection behind it. Here, eat up. I ruined your jerky, so here's some roast to make up for it. Are you okay? In what way? Are you talking about the scratch I got from the tusk beast, or about how mad you've made me? This is for you. It's medicine my dad taught me how to make. He always takes it with him when he goes hunting. And it's good for treating scratches and bites from wild beasts. How do I know there's no poison in it? <laughs> the boy draws out his knife and makes a deep cut, then pours some powder out from the medicine bottle to apply to the wound. Though he grits his teeth in pain, he firmly resolves to not utter a sound. Now do you trust me? You sure took your sweet time, but you're still my hero. Hm. So this is what Tusk Beast meat tastes like. Eh, it's tough and gamey. Consider yourself lucky to get to eat cooked meat in the wilderness at all. You do have a point. When I was with those men up in the mountains, it'd be months between a single bite of meat. Are you talking about your boys? Even the villains known far and wide couldn't get enough food to eat. Why are you making fun of me? I've seen my fair share of kids your age running away from home after arguing with their family, but I've never met a kid so desperate to be the bad guy. I don't want people looking down on me. What does it matter if you're good or bad? If nobody's scared of you, then you're gonna get bullied. Who taught you that nonsense? 
I figured it out myself. From experience. You're only half correct. When you become feared, it's true that nobody will bully you anymore. Instead, they'll join hands to get rid of you. The only way of the only way to avoid making enemies is to avoid treating others as enemies. I... Can I ask you a question? Your Kung Fu is so powerful. Where did you learn it? If you get thrown out there to fend for yourself across the Jing Hu for five years, then get tossed into war for another five, you'll be at a similar level, if you survive. Also, I had an exceptionally strong teacher. Even stronger than you? Much stronger. Then, if I train hard from now on, how long would it take for me to reach your level? Ten years. D ten years? Assuming you survive, that is. Ma'am. What did you just call me? What would you say to taking me on as your disciple? I'll follow you. Whether you're a wanderer or a hero, you'll be my master from now on. I'm not taking disciples. And I'm not about to just casually hand my kung fu to somebody else. Besides, with how crafty you are, if you use the techniques I taught you to do evil, wouldn't that be my fault? I promise, if you teach me kung fu and I become as strong as you and nobody bullies me, I'll obey every word you say and be a good person just like you. <laughs> you think I'm a, I'm a good person? I... I think so? After all, you saved me and gave me food to eat. You're so strong, but you still spend money to buy things instead of stealing. You're nothing like the others. <laughs> so, you're not totally incapable of telling good from evil. But I still don't understand why you're trying to save me. Is it because heroes like you always butt into people's business? You've already asked me several questions. Ma'am, you don't have to take me as, a, as your disciple, but at least let me follow you. Anywhere's fine, just don't force me to go home. I want to ask you something as well. I can see you still keep the keys of your home with you, so why do you refuse to go back? I'm not ready yet. When I ran away from home, I made up my mind that I wouldn't go back until I've done something worthful, worthwhile. Are your folks still there? I haven't seen my mom as long as I can remember. But my dad should still be there. I don't have any other relatives. All the more reason for you to go home. You have the heart to make your father worry about you. I don't think me going back home back would make him happy. Everyone in the village hates me, looks down on me, and bullies me. You wouldn't understand at all. Same thing I told you before. If you want to get along with people, don't treat them as your enemies. Besides, how much hatred could anyone possibly have for a boy your age? I said it, didn't I? I've done a ton of bad things. You'd be scared to death if I listed them off to you. In other words, I'd rather die than keep living as a nobody. You wouldn't say that if only you knew how many people there are across this land who do anything for a chance to live. Forget it. I can't beat you in a fight or in an argument. Whatever you say goes, I guess. But one more question. Why don't you let me follow you? A life of wandering has its risks. For a boy like you, it's better to have a place to call home than to be dri adrift outside. What about you then? Where's your home? My home is long gone. What does that even mean? Was it a catastrophe, or was it demolished to make way for a nomadic city? Long gone means long gone. The place is gone, and the people are gone. We've been talking about me all day, but why don't you tell me about yourself? I mean, you haven't even told me your name. Xiu Bai. Xiu as in hatred, Bai as in white snow. I'm a nobody, with no stories to tell. Well, whatever. If you don't feel like talking, so be it. I know heroes like you love to act all mysterious. Some stories remain untold because they're unpleasant. If you've eaten your film, 
Go rest up. There is a long road ahead of us, so conserve your energy. Pass the woods, cross the river, and you'll enter the mountains. Though it is less like a mountain and more like a forest made up of mountains. One mount connects to the next, the peak of one mountain connecti connected to the foot of another. There is no end in sight, no road to traverse. It's as if the happenings of the outside world have no bearing upon what occurs deep in the mountains. It is too remote, and even time itself can be walled off by distance. We're almost there. It should be around here somewhere. You made one hell of a detour just to climb this mountain. What are you trying to do? I heard that if you stand on the peak here, you can see all the way to human. <laughs> the boy tries his best to stand on tiptoes, gazing westward from the cliff. The wild grass grows rampant, and he can see only a faint line of dark yellow at the farthest edge of the horizon. A look of disappointment creeps onto his face. Chibai knows that, out of sight, the wounded nomadic city is still crawling along the barrens, nervously licking its wounds. I passed by here a few years ago. Used to be more desolate. You been here? It's been a while. For the Chidao, right? Look over there. On the other side of the cliff, a great trail winds along the terrain and extends all the way to the edge of the horizon, quite eye-catching in contrast to the barrens. Chidao, a Yanis infrastructure project for catastrophe avoidance, resource transportation and aiding people living in remote areas. Tens of thousands of such roads interconnect more than a hundred nomadic cities across the country's endless wilderness. It stretches across wild, untamed mountains and erects bridges over low-lying areas. The supply stations set up along the roads are like neatly sectioned bamboo nodes, bringing life to every place they reach. If it can be said that the gods abandoned this barren land, then humans are the ones who can once again lay out its veins. All under heaven is strife, but humanity does what it can. After I left home, I would sometimes see Chidao construction teams, but what's the point of repairing these roads? It's not like they can pack up and leave the same way nomadic cities can, so won't they just get torn up when a catastrophe hits? The places that nomadic cities don't reach depend on those these roads. Repairing them after they are destroyed is a matter of necessity. The material cost is irrelevant. But very few know, very few remember, that there are always people doing this work. Not long ago, a catastrophe swept across this mountain, headed for Yumen. It caused great damage to the city, but also left behind a heroic tale. Out here, far from civilization, there were no casualties, no buildings destroyed, and little trace of what took place. At this moment, only the construction team is still hard at work here, busy repairing this unassuming stretch of road. I heard that following this road west uh, will lead you to Yumen. You said you've been all over the place before. So have you been to Yumen? I have. When I was still hanging around those bandits, I heard they were getting some guys together for a big job in Yumen, but they didn't think I could hold my own in a fight so they wouldn't bring me along. Consider yourself lucky. What kind of place is it? Are there lots of heroes with great kung fu? A bunch of mighty warriors and weapons? No. It's mostly just ordinary people going about their ordinary days. Yumen travels along the desert and is always followed by the wind and sand. How could the people there possibly have any e have an easy life? I'm not afraid of hard work as long as I get to do something meaningful. Sure beats being stuck in this stinky old ravine. Either way, you're not gonna talk me out of it. 
I'm only heading back home because you told me to, but give me a bit to prepare and I'll be back out uh, on the road in no time. I swear, the next time I stand here, the name of Feng Xiaoxi will be known far and wide. No, I'll become a hero known to all. You'd better worry about becoming a good person first. If I hear anything about your fearsome notoriety again, I'll pay you a visit you won't enjoy. You always know how to rain on my parade. Anyway, we'll reach Mushan after crossing this mountain. I know the way back from here. The light of dawn clears away the mountain's mist, the mountain mist, and the wind carries a few wisps of chimney smoke in oblique trails. Unmelted snow can still be seen atop the peaks in the distance. Plots of farmland spread out thi thinly along the foot of the mountains. The heavy rain must have hit halfway through the plowing season. The soft soil that had been pushed into ridges washed into a muddy mess once more. In the place that in the places that have not yet been plowed, clumps of soil are packed together tighter and tighter. The heads of wheat from the last crop still droop. At the end of the Shufen equinox, working the fields proves to be difficult. And uh, as a quick by the way here, Shunfen pretty much translates in here as spring. So spring equinox. And yes, Shunfen is also in the title of this side story. So it translates to a death in spring. Anyway, continuing. The villagers in the fields put down the plows in their hands, straightening their backs while rubbing their waists. Took long enough for the sun to come out. Looks like today will be a fine day, with just the right amount of sunlight. Gotta tilt the fields again while I still can. Is it really you? Feng Xiaoxi? You're Feng Xiaoxi, aren't you? Oh, is it Uncle Deyuan? You bet, look who's back. Why are you staring at me like that? Are you still mad about that one time I accidentally poured fertilizer into your burden beast feet throw, throw? Throw? Oh, Jesus. You, you're still alive? Of course I am. But I haven't seen you in three years, and your back's gotten even more crooked. Jinju Li, damn it all! I've got to go tell the elder. See, what'd I tell you? Everyone here hates me. Looks more to me like they're afraid of you. How many bad things did you do to make everyone so scared? You should ask who started it. People are the same wherever you go. They always find a boy who's easiest to pick on. But now that I'm back, I'm not afraid of them anymore. What, never seen such a rundown place before? All I say is, you haven't seen anything yet. <sighs> but I can add, this is the first time I've seen a temple like that at the entrance to a village. And over here, why is there a fresh grave? Because people die. Is that so strange? The only thing is, I don't know which family they're from or why they were buried next to the temple. Well, whatever. I might not know who you are, but if you're buried here, you're probably one of the villagers. Death is a release anyway. At least your suffering's over. The boy turns sideways and bows in the direction of the grave. Though his words are frank, his posture is serious. We're almost there. My place is just up ahead. Why'd you stop? I... Forget it. Can't hide from it anyway. I'm not afraid. Dad, I'm back! He steps into a tiny shack of wood and mud to find nobody inside. Various trinkets and knickknacks can be seen all around, but they are organized neatly. 
Seeing the leftover food on the stove, the boy seems to let out a sigh of relief. <sighs> That's strange. All the stuff's still here, but nobody's home. Maybe he's out in the fields? I'll go look for him. Dad? Dad? Where are you? Stop him! Don't let him get away! Alright, and we should continue on with the second story. Courtyard Valley. Beginning in the past first. Thanks, Yarshi! What are you doing up there in the rafters? Get down here this instant! This is the Yishan Temple, so take your antics anywhere else but here. Not a chance. The village is so big, why do you have to dump this lousy temple on our family's land? You're just bullying us. Zhou Liu, why not dump it at your place instead? You know nothing, brat. The temple has been protecting Mushan village for a thousand years. You don't just pick it up and move it. The entire village agreed to this arrangement. It's not up to you. Nah. Didn't this land used to be completely barren? Why did you... Why didn't you say that uh, the Feng Shui was good then? You're telling me after all these years my dad worked to make the soil fertile, the Feng Shui just happened to improve at the same time? I'll come out and say it. You thought you could step up and bully the only outsider in this village. Well, let me tell you, you're wrong. That might just... I uh, might just take it, but I sure won't. You want the temple to protect the harvest? Well, I want to blow it up so we can actually grow something to eat. You wouldn't dare... So many faces showing up at your door upon your return. I've only seen that happen to gamblers. Well, I guess you... We're talking at least a little truth on the way here. The villagers certainly don't want you around. That's why I told you not to bring me here. But you never said why exactly. The small yard is packed full of people, but none of the villagers move to start a conversation. They just stare at Chu Bai and Fa Feng Xiaoxi, like the two of them are strange new beasts they can't let out. <coughs> Let me through. What's everyone, everyone bumbling about for here for? Even Xia Xi's menu wasn't this lively. A thin and tall man stumbles out from the crowd with labored breaths, his back carrying a log, is as bent as the bow on his hip. The man sights Feng Xiao Xi and freezes for a second, before quickly averting his gaze and slowly turning away. Dad... Hunter! Hey, don't you forget our agreement? I don't forget. But Xiao Xi has been away from home for three whole years. He should have something to eat first, shouldn't he? Let's head back. We can sort things out with the village later. The field work's already been lagging lately. In just a few days, Xun Fen will have been been and gone. <sighs> All that babbling on the way here, and you turn mute in front of your dad? Dad, I found you. <laughs> The hunter presses his pale lips together, and without answering his son, goes into the house, setting his log against the wall. The boy freezes in place. Shubai prods him with the hilt of her sword. Please, miss, have a seat. Thanks for bringing the kid home. I'm sure it took some effort. And, uh, please, have a drink. No need. I don't want to interrupt the reunion. I'll take a look around the village. 
I'll give you the tour. You stay put. Miss, miss, if I could just have a moment. Zhu <laughs> Liu is out there talking about the heroic heroine who brought Feng Xiao Shi home, so I had to see for myself. Taking a look at you, you must be... I am called Xu Bai from Jiangshu. Everyone here in Mushan is of... Zhao is of the Zhao clan. I'm Zhao Xun, village headman and clan elder. Our village is tucked away here in the northwestern reaches of Yan, so we hardly ever see strangers. Rest assured, I'm nothing but a Jiangshu wanderer. I have no ill intent. Oh, miss, that's not what I meant to imply. I happened to come across the boy uh, out on his own, so I took a little detour and brought him back, ho back here. Miss, you're, shiver you're a chivalrous one. Dear guest from afar, a poor village like ours has nothing much to offer. But if you don't mind... A few meters away from them stands a well. Something crashes into the bucket above the well, sending it to the bottom. A long sword juts out to hold the mechanism in place, pulling the rope, rope taut. Taut. Chubai drags the bucket up. Just a scared little burden beast. Looks like the one from Zhou Daji's place. Its mother died in childbirth, leaving this poor thing to grow up alone, so it's as tame as can be. It probably just got startled. It's not hurt, at least. Seems like it passed out from all the water. Oh, about that. How did you move to the well so fast? I feel like my vision blurred for a moment. Was that Kung Fu? Mm. The well is full of muddy water. Yes, it was raining heavily last week, and the mud has yet to settle. Uh, at least two years of drought have seen most of our crops wither away. No wonder there are so small, so many wells around the village. Heaven can be very unreasonable at times. We either get nary a drop or a night disastrous deluge. <laughs> Miss Xu, where did you come, uh, come here from? Human. But I believe I detect Zheng Qi accent. I was born there. I see. If you came from Yumen, you must have entered the village from the north. Head further south and you'll find a section of the Shidao washed away by a mudslide. Life is hard here. With two raucous grunts, the young burden beast wakes up. The swordswoman loosens her grip and it bolts around the corner in a blink, leaving nothing but a withered acacia tree in front of her. It's all already late March, but spring has apparently not yet come to this small northwestern village. Indeed, this is a perilous place. You said you came across the boy all alone. He must have gone through a lot after leaving the village. Miss, I'd like to ask you something. What sort of trouble did the lad get up to out there? No trouble to speak of. He was just lost out in the wilderness. The boy has been particularly rowdy, ever since he was little. Elder, I have some questions about Feng Xiaoxi. The villagers, they seem hostile towards the boy. After a long period of silence, the man turns around and goes into a back room. He soon returns with a pile of... Uh, uh, sorry. 
He soon returns with a pile of beast hides and bones. Take these. Dad? What for? This is all we have. Spring has barely come, so prey has been scarce. But they are still worth something. Give them to her as payment. <laughs> is it not enough? We don't have anything else, so I guess I'll beg her for mercy, although she doesn't seem like the talkative type. She's not a debt collector. You must have stolen or broken something. Why else would she walk you all the way back here? <laughs> do you really think I can't do anything right? You have done more than a little wrong. Some time ago. Tiana, this door, this pillar, it's been split in two. The temple stood here for centuries protecting us, but it's been ruined. Such disrespect. Well, it's lucky the ancestor tablet seems mostly fine. Enough, uh, kowtowing already. Let's find whoever did this. Say, where is Feng Xiaoxi? Gone without a trace. I think the kid got caught up in the explosion. I saw him bleeding and limping out of the village. He had so many bombs on him. <sighs> Serves him right. What? All for a piece of land we could have negotiated over? We definitely could have resolved this peacefully. Alright, alright, go tell the elder. I'll head to the hunter's place. Didn't you say he ran away from the village? The kid was hurt pretty bad. I'd better get the hunter to look for him. He blew up the village temple with his own explosives. Three years ago, he was probably just 11 or 12 years old. His father sometimes hunted with explosives to cave in beast nests and such. That child is as smart as he is audacious. I must have figured out how to make them too. From my personal experience, this certainly seems like something he would do. It's the temple at the village entrance, isn't it? It looks it looked pretty unique, even at a glance. Who is it dedicated to? Our very ancestors. Back in the day, 800 years ago, or a thousand, how long exactly, I'm not so sure myself. The story has been passed down for ge from generation to generation, after all. Anyway, in those times, there was nothing here but mountains, so dense that not even foul beasts would fly over. Our ancestors alone, and armed with only a hoe, dug out a mountain and turned it into far arable land eventually forming this village. You should have seen it in the way... Uh, it on the way here, miss. Barren land in all directions, as far as the eye can see, but here we managed to farm and feed our hundred, our hundred or so people. We are sheltered from the most catastrophes. He took a hoe and plowed out a li living from heaven itself. We call it the Jishan Temple. In thanks to our benevolent ancestor and to commemorate that he lives on in us forever. This here temple has blessed our Mushan village with a thousand years of peace and quiet. We all know that a few measly buildings made of wood and dirt won't affect the harvest at all. But us Mushan villagers have lived like this for generations. We have our nostalgia and it puts our, mi puts our minds at ease. Dad, if you want to yell at me, just do it. The way you're staring at me, it's awkward. <laughs> You've grown tall, but not much otherwise. You must not have been eating well while out there all these years. Of all the things to say, as long as you're alive, that's all that matters. I was just worried. How did you make your way here? We walked along the Shidao and occasionally hitched a ride with merchant caravans and came across and, and came, uh, uh, merchant caravans we came across hopping on their burden beasts. How long was the journey? Probably about a month. You went so far. Dad, 
All these years you... Barely making a living. The harvest has been getting worse these past few years. First, an infestation destroyed our crops. Then came the drought. Heaven refused to give us a single drop of water. Not from the sky, not from the wells. No matter how many we dug. And now this year, Shinfen has come. It's the right time for sowing, but then we face a brutal storm. Who knows if the land has always been this temperamental, or if heaven has turned against us. Or maybe the village ancestor refuses to bless us. And it's because I blew up the temple. That's what you want to say, right? That's not what I meant. That's what a lazy person would say. Farming is all about working the soil with the tool in your hand. That's what you told me. The idol in the temple can't move. How could it help us with the harvest? We can't say things like that. We've got to talk it through with them. Besides, we're the ones who brought them first. Wronged them first. Dad, the villagers bully you because they think you're a coward. What about the mount mountain slowly eating up the fields? Sooner or later, even the temple is going to get washed away by mudslides. It's just a monument. Why not put it in Jouri's backyard? He has so much room and he's not even growing anything. They bully us because we're outsiders. Uh, let's just drop it already, alright? I see. So that's why the villagers had such a visceral reaction to Feng Xiaoxi. Hmm. Well, not exactly. We all thought the boy was already... He was injured when he fled into the wilderness after blowing up the temple. Did you not look for him? We did. I gathered a party overnight and we spent several days searching dozens of Li, to no avail. I hear the villagers of Qingnin stand out like bright lights in the darkness. But for us here, in the mountains, all you see is grey and yellow, our boundless white in or boundless white in winter. Settlements look more like perfect hiding spots. Beasts roam freely, so the roads are not safe. Sometimes you even run into fleeing bandits. So a boy that's small hurts so badly. He's still alive and well. Seems like the kid has been through a lot. As long as he is safe. Elder, I have something to say. Please, speak freely. I happened across Feng Xiaoxi and brought him here. I have no reason to meddle in your villagers' affairs. However, since I took on the initiative to bring him back, I am also responsible for his safety. As you should be. I can't say I'm good at reading people, but after having traveled with him for a while, I at least understand him a little. He may be stubborn and willful, but he is by no means a bad person. So I hope you won't make things difficult for him. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. Please, rest assured, miss. We Mushan villagers may be poor, but we are responsible people. To hold a grudge. Who or what exactly should we hold a grudge against? The mountains? Heaven? Or... A little boy around ten years old? As you said, life is hard here. Moving the temple was just to put the villagers' minds at ease. Though now, when I think about it, we were indeed quite inconsiderate at the time. This is to say, I'm the one that fought here. You are a man of sense. You don't have to explain it all to me. After all, Feng Xiaoxi did no did do wrong. If uh if still hasn't met if he still hasn't matured, even after so much hardship these last three years, he will have to be disciplined. Make mistakes, suffer the consequences, remember your actions and gain insight. That makes life less painful. You're very perceptive. Not really. I have my explanation, and I'm relieved. Yes, yes. Yes, I bombed the temple, 
and after three years I, Feng Xiaoxi, have returned. If they can't get over that, they can come and find me. Even now, today, I still want to blow the thing up. Fine, go do it. Blow it to pieces. Three years ago, you never... You, your nerve was as high heaven itself, and now three years later, it's soared even higher, even higher. What did you come back for? Just to blow it up and run away again? <laughs> I'm done talking, Dad. <sighs> what did you bring that log in for, anyway? I'm making a coffin. Your father's health is failing with each passing day, and all the money I saved for my burial went to rebuild the temple. I don't know if you were dead or alive, so I... I thought I should at least make my own coffin while I could. Hey, come on, no need to talk like that. I spent a whole month looking for you. I was hurt. I passed out near the Chidao. You sure are smart. A caravan carrying goods from the mountains found me and threw me onto the back of some burden beast carrying fodder. By the time I came to, I was already in a nomadic city. It's lucky some good people found you, and not a pack of beasts. What happened after you healed up? I... I decided to make a name for myself before coming back. Why aren't you asking me what I did in the city? If you actually accomplished something, there would have been a swordswoman escort. They, there wouldn't have been a swordswoman escorting you home. Um, I said it before. You can't bear to live here, but I'm afraid you're you'll suffer even more if you go out to a town or nomadic city. Returning with your life intact is already a blessing to me. I've never been to a city, so I have no idea of what it's like. When you feel like talking about it, you can let me know. Okay. So, are you going to cause a ruckus this time? Only if they bully us. You're still so stubborn. The day you ran away, the other gathered up the whole village to help me look for you. I live here alone, but the villagers don't give me a hard time. That plot of land you keep bringing up. Haven't I been tending to it even now? And that just means they have some shred of consciousness left in them. Can you just promise your dad one thing? Just stay safe for good. And don't make a fuss about it. <sighs> Fine, whatever you say. So, you're leaving, going to Jiangnan. I have places to be. Bringing you back here has already de delayed my journey by a lot. Then, there is no harm in delaying in a while, mo a while more, right? It's, a it's dark already. Why not rest here a few more days and teach me some Kung Fu before you go? Didn't I teach you enough on the way here? <laughs> Dad, let's... Miss, thank you so much for bringing my boy home. We have nothing to repay you with. It's fine. Since you're in a hurry, I won't pressure you to stay. Thanks, Xiaoxi. We may have met by chance, but I have some parting words for you. The Jiangshu can be vicious, and you have learned something, whether you want it to or not. But now that you're home, you should make your peace and avoid causing any more trouble. <laughs> I can make a name for myself when, wherever I am. One day, in Jiangnan, you'll hear all about the valiant Feng, Sh Feng Xiaoxi's deeds. As long as I don't hear of you making mischief. And whoever you trouble next, she may not be as forgiving as I am. Uh, you? Forgiving? <laughs> oh, hey, can you say that line the heroes always say? The one in all the mo novels? Hmm? Jiang Xu Zai Jian. Jiang Xu Zai Jian. See you around, kid. Hmm. 
Miss, let me see you off. No need to trouble yourself. It's all right. They haven't done any work on the road for a long time, so they are full of holes. I'll guide you to the gate. <laughs> Jubai walks at a brisk pace, and the old man quickens his steps to catch up, ending the conversation. The sky gradually turns dark. It may be strange to ordinary folk, but Jiangshu adventurers prefer to travel at night, using the darkness to their advantage. The newly raised grave at the entrance of the village is stubby and inconspicuous, hardly visible in the twilight. Zoshi, Zoshi, is everyone here? I'll count again, Elder. Aside from Taeyuan, who stepped on his plow out in the fields today and couldn't make it, uh, everyone else is here. The whole village is here, Dad. Isn't this a bit much for a welcoming party? We're not Zhao's, after all. Even when they uh, had that meeting at the temple back then, there was nothing for us. <sighs> Considering what's happening today, happened today and how we're mixed up in it. <sighs> Three years later, Peng Xiaoxi stands once again before the temple. This time there are no explosives, and a man beside him is even older. The wall he blew up has already been rebuilt, and the statue of the mountain digger repaired. But the craftsmanship is a little lacking, and upon seeing this slightly this slightly amusing sight, Bang Xiaoxi carelessly lets out a laugh. There are several broken tiles on the floor, with bugs in the still damaged ceiling forming layers and layers of webbing that blends into the wood. Perhaps it is too dark to be certain, but he can't figure out if the temple was impossible to renovate or if it was successfully repaired but has gradually returned to a dilapidated state. So, this is where we stand now. Xiaoxi has apologized. He was still a child then, and the hunter has spent the last three years doing his best to help rebuild the Yishan Temple. Come on, Elder. Let's get to the point already. Hunter, how many years has it been since you first came to the village? This year, and it'll be 21. Your family is the only one with a different name, but you married a daughter of ours, so all these years have been a so all these years you have been a part of our family. Let our previous bumps in the road, misunderstandings and conflicts all stay in the past. From this day forward, the clan officially accepts you into our family, and our ancestors will bless you with peace and prosperity as well. Xiao Xi may change his family name to Xiao too, if he so wishes. Uh, what? What are you trying to pull this time? Nah, I like my own name just fine. Why would I change it? Elder, just come out and say what you mean already. In the end, we are all one family, and that means we face our challenges together. I gather the whole village here today to make one request. Xiao Xi, for the sake of the village, can you pretend to be dead? Alright, and let's move on to our third and final part for today. Is there a way to make the mountain disappear? The people of the settlement have been here for generations, begging the mountain to grant them a living. The wild fruits are poisonous before they ripen, while the beasts are cunning and vicious. One could easily lose one's life to carelessness, but there is no other source of food. The rain flows through the rocky crevices, turning yellow by the time it reaches the foot of the mountain but there is no other source of water. 
He sharpens a stone's edge, breaks some vines, and ties the rock to a slender tree trunk. Now he has a hoe. He finds a small patch of relatively moist and flat ground at the foot of the mountain and digs out ridges with his hoe. He plants seeds he has collected over time. Now he has a plot of arable land. The small piece of land cannot feed everyone, but if the mountain burned there, it is tall enough to pierce the clouds. It spans wider than the eye can see. With sharp peaks and drops this way and that, it makes an imposing obstacle. The wind itself cannot freely pass, let alone men. It's as if the mountain before them is draining their very vitality. And so, hoe in hand, he begins digging into the mountain. He works and rests at the foot of the mountain, armed with just hoe and pan. He would wake, dig, sleep, repeat. Six months pass, and a mountain shows little more than a few shallow scars. But the spectating villagers put down the fruit and pulp in their hands. More and more, more join the excavation. With more hoes at work, the arable land expands. The cycle of crushing rock and reclaiming soil continues day after day, night after night. You there, how long have you been digging? Three years, five, I'm not sure anymore. And how long do you plan to dig? Till I can't dig no more. Such foolishness. No matter how sharp your hoe, what can it do against hard rock? No matter how wide your pen, how can it possibly collect all the rubble? Did you honestly think you can clear this mountain within your lifetime? Who says it has to be done in my lifetime? Even when I can dig no more, I have my clansmen and my children. And when they can dig no more, their, their children will carry on. This mountain cannot change, but our numbers will grow forever. There is no need to clear the entire mountain, but with each day we dig, we gain one more field and feed one more child. You don't plan to stop? To stop would be to give in. For what reason would you want to make an enemy of the mountain? Why did it have to be here? It was heaven and earth that stood against us first. Take your words and go back wherever you came from. I have work to do. Posters and with such a din. You have been whittling away at my tail for five years, three months and seven days. I've had enough. If you people won't stop, then I'll just have to move. The mountain suddenly vanishes. There are no sounds or sights. After yet another day of work, he uses his pan as a pillow and enjoys a good night's sleep. The next morning, the only sight is rubble scattered all over the land. A sight so unprecedented, he wonders if the mountain ever existed in the first place. His clansmen said his diligence and sincerity must have moved the gods, who in turn moved the mountain away. A few days ago. Hey, the Elder is here. I was worried about the mud and plaster getting soaked by the rain, so I came to check first thing in the morning, but now I see this part of the Chidao has been washed away by the mudslide. The boy was lying near where the mud settled. When I went to check on him, he, he wasn't breathing. <clears throat> elder? Elder? What's wrong? Why, why would someone... If I had to guess, he was probably walking along the Chidao before getting caught up in the mudslide. I've asked around the village, 
and no one knows who the boy was. No one from the nearby village seemed to recognize his face either. The way he's dressed, he's definitely not one of us mountain folk. What has such a young boy? What was such a young boy doing all uh, all alone in the mountains? Elder, what should we do? We're all waiting for you. Did did he have, did he have anything on him that could be used to identify him? No, if there was anything, I think I would have been. I think it would have been washed away by the mudslide. What's that in his hand? Uh, he's gripping it tight. A plastic box? It's pretty heavy. Take a look. It has some movable parts. And if you open it here... There's a, there's even a mirror? No idea what this, what it is. This is a camcorder. Put it away before you break it. When the government investigators arrive, give it to them. Maybe we can find out where the boy came from and notify his family. Elder, are, are we calling them here just for this? A life was lost, so of course we have to. Besides, we were ob obliged to inform them about the damage to the Chigao anyway. As for, well, I'll explain it to the mandarins when they get here. It's not that I want to cover this up, but Elder, if you could hear me out. The mudslide washed away part of the Chidao, and this child has lost his life. What if he perished doing maintenance work? What do you mean? Elder, just look at the inn. At him. If the, if the hunter's boy Feng Xiaoxi was still with us, wouldn't he look pretty much like this, like that? Oh. The old man grabs his sleeve, wiping the offering table in front of the statue and placing a few stale fruit and a handful of moldy wheat seeds upon it. He collapses in front of the statue, keeping his gaze to the floor. He keeps silent in that position for a long while. Man and temple alike, damaged and empty. The fruit has been in the cellar since last winter. March is almost over, but the few trees in the village have not yet flowered. So I beg for your forgiveness for these paltry offerings. As for the seeds, we weren't able to stockpile much due to the drought the last two years, and they've grown moldy with all the rain recently. The weather has only just started to clear up, but Shun Fen is almost over. We have so much catching up to do. I've been urging everyone to help out in the fields. Honored ancestor, I have no other choice. It's difficult making a path through the wilderness. That Chidao is such a huge project, and the Ministry of Engineering pays very well. They pay even more for those who die on the job. Well over a million. It's more than enough for the village. We could renovate the canals, and have a messenger bring us some new farming equipment from the nomadic cities. We could even drill more wells for water. If... If there was money left over after that, we could buy the finest seats and store them for emergencies. The village gone without grain the village is gone without grain for many seasons. Our harvests have been deteriorating the past few years, and we might not be able to make ends meet. <sighs> they said they would grant us a subsidy subsidy, but we still haven't received it. Wuxia needs money to survive. It's all I can do to borrow that child's corpse and the name of Feng Xiaoxi. It's been three years. The hunter has never mentioned it, but everyone knows the boy probably died in the wilderness. Honored ancestors, this is a most wicked idea, but it is still an idea. I... Everything I do is for the sake of the village. I really truly have no malicious intent. 
I must share this with you, or my heart will surely crumble. I am useless. I have been clan elder for decades. And yet the villagers' live lives have not improved. I did not even manage to repair this place in the past three years. I don't have your strength to dig out the entire mountain to provide a place for hundreds to live and work. I turned 67 this year and am no longer able to work the fields. I can only do my best to help the rest survive while I am still so of sound mind and body. Honored ancestor, I beg of you, bless your descendants, the village, see to it that this all goes well. Head priest, pray tell the difference between earthly events and the visions of the painting. The wandering priest opens her eyes. She sits on the ground with her back to the statue of the excavator, using her folded up robe as a cushion and carrying a half-filled bowl of water. She looks to have just finished meditating, but also to have just woken up from a nap. Many thanks for the food and water. Though thou mayst be, mayst be not but a statue, Cough the head priest, karma is infinite, living or dead, and thus I dub thee a being as well. Last night was such a terrible deluge, and I was so tired and hungry, I could not carry on, and so borrowed thine back upon which to rest mine. It was not my intention to eavesdrop. However... While all places may not sport a giant bell like Po Shan village, all places still need their bell ringers. Open up. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not poisoned. It's sand beast meat. Your father brought uh, brought it for you. We haven't any for a long time, and he wouldn't touch it either. He said you'd like strong flavor, so I made it spicier than usual. Your fi first meal after a your long trip home shouldn't have been like this, but <sighs> <laughs> come on, have a little at least. Don't starve yourself. It's not like we actually want you dead, you know. You might as well just kill me right now. Again with the childish tantrums. You know, it's weird giving your name to a corpse, but it's just a name, isn't it? You can call yourself uh, Feng Xiao He, Feng Xiao Shu, or whatever you want. Why wish for death over something like this? Besides, the village will be grateful for your sacrifice and treat your family even better. What's wrong with living in peace? Oh yes, just like a burden beast living its peaceful life, letting anybody else name it, whatever. How could you compare us to burden beasts? Though, now that you mention it, we both eat, work, age, get sick and die. Then why all the fuss if we are so alike? I don't care what kind of lives you want to live, but I want to live mine the way I want. Man, you're so difficult. What kind of reasoning is that? The old man stands hunched over by the well his arched back, as tall as the well's shaking frame. He cranks the lever and sets the raised bucket to the side, standing up straight to catch his breath. Inside the bucket is mud that is yet to settle. Though it is not drinkable water, it is suitable for crops. The wells have not been dr uh, drilled in vain. Elder, what are you doing here? You should be leaving the hard work to the youths. I'm preparing to water the water that it's ready for everyone once they finish planting the seeds. I have the strength to do this much, at the very least. Besides, how could I just sit around at a time like this? When did you become so sentimental? You weren't like this when you 
when you led a crew to bid against the neighboring village for the Chidao contract a few years back. That was different. It was for the good of the village. Of course, my conscience thinks otherwise. And why is that? We checked the dead kid over and over again. Nobody knows or has ever seen him before. All that's left is to wait for the mandarins to come the day after tomorrow to deal with the Hukou, Hukou stuff. Now let the hunter put a marker on the grave and cry a little, and we're good. We're all together in this, and no one's going to snitch. Who would ever find out? Has the hunter not said anything? What could he even do now? He agreed to it a long time ago, and now he's even got his son back. How could he be so unsatisfied? How's Xiao Xi doing? We've set it all up. We have men watching the door and it's locked up tight. There's no way he's escaping. Don't let him starve. Relax. Julius family is making sure he's fed. We just have to get through this, and then we'll have plenty of time to convince him. Anyway, don't be too hard on him, alright? He's still a boy after all. The uh, day after tomorrow. These days have not been easy. I pray nothing goes awry. Hey, where's my dad? Why hasn't he come to see me? You locked him up too. Your dad is... He is... How do you even explain it? So whose idea was this? The damn... Jingbao... Zhou Xi. Or the Elder. How did you even get my dad to agree to this? Or was it something he came up with himself? No, no, dear boy, you can't think badly of your dad like that. We all thought you were already... <laughs> we thought you weren't coming back right up until you did. Well, I'm back. But we already made a report, so every everyone thinks that there is no going back now. We're all in on this, including the Elder and your dad, too. He agreed to it. Uh, Xiao Xi, please, listen to me. Everyone is happy to see you come home alive and well. Your dad, most of all. You can imagine how happy he was to see you again. You've seen what's coming to... Uh, uh, what's become of Mushan. We really need that money. You remember my girl? You were like a you were like her big brother when you were when you were kids. She called you Um uh, that just translates to brother in this case. Like big bro. She's sick and she has no hope of fighting it uh, uh fighting it way out here. She really Ryu and I had planned to save up money to send her to a nomadic city for treatment. But the last years have been so hard that we're just barely getting by. There's no way we could save every any uh, we could save anything. You're not gonna win me over here. I know you're a good boy at heart, so in a critical moment like this, we can't let an opportunity go to waste, right? Just do the village a little favor. Do you not feel the least bit ashamed of your actions? I'll say it again. My name is my own. You can't have it. <sighs> I've said my piece. It's not like it's up to me. No matter how much noise you make, the nail's already in the coffin. Nothing's going to change. I'll leave the food here. Have some when you get hungry, alright? Yao Daiji, why aren't you out working in such good weather? Plow's broken. I was working over at the east end of the village when I hit a buried stone. Now there's a huge gaping hole in the middle. There should be some spares in the shed over at my place. Just take one and replace yours. <clears throat> Anything else? Elder, when I hit the stone, the Originium motor broke too. No one to blame but myself. The motor's been in bad shape for a long time, but I couldn't afford to repair it when the last nomadic city passed by. I've spoken to you many times about this bad habit of putting off repairs. And now you found yourself in a tough spot. Hmm. I'll go look for a solution. How do you suppose you'll turn dirt and rock into an Arginium motor? It 
if, com if it comes to it, I'll plow the fields the old-fashioned way, just like our ancestors did. They dug an entire mountain, after all. Are you sure about that? Easy to say for the flatlands, but most of our fields are on steep slopes, and coupled with soil erosion, even a burden beast would have a hard time. I know that. Your aunt should be home by now. Go look for her. She can help you fish out that mobility scooter of mine. You don't mean... It's not as powerful, but it's still a working motor. With a little tinkering, you can probably make it work on your plow. Didn't the foreman see you having trouble walking while we were finishing up the Chidao? So we bought that for you from the nomadic city. You might need it come winter. What if I break it too? It's already broken. Uh-huh? Uh uh, how? I'm not used to toys from the city. It reached the end of March. We sow in spring and harvest in autumn. The seasons don't wait for us. It's not like I'll be totally immobile without the little car. But if we don't grow enough food now, none of us will last through the winter. But... Stop whining and get moving. Hmm. Hmm? What was that? Is someone there? I know I'm old, but are my eyes failing me already? <laughs> the young swordswoman steps back just slightly, enough for the fence to hide her figure. The villagers carry water to and from the fields while the sound of well machinery trundles on. Shubai looks at the old man by the well, and then at the mud and scattered footprints on the ground. Roads and mountain villages are always like this. People are out walking under clear skies while smoke and dust abound. But in the rainy season, there is mud everywhere. She steps back and goes no further. Some questions are not worth asking, but there is something that she needs to confirm. She pushes open the small courtyard door. The place was so packed the day before, she didn't have time to look closely. The north-facing fence has an opening not unlike an old man missing his front teeth. It is stained with dirt and mud. Most, most likely, from all the heavy rain a few days ago. <sighs> a long bench sits in the middle of the house, black and shiny, showing its age. Leaning against the bench is a log, half a man's height. The hunter rests his shoulder against the top part of it, chipping away the wood. Sawdust flying to the ground. Shubai recognizes the log. It's the one the hunter carried home yesterday. Now cut in half and being roughly chipped into a rectangular shape. Who's there? Oh, Miss Shu. I thought you already... Did you happen to forget something? What is the lumber for? Huh? The wood you're working on? Oh, uh, I'm making a bow. You are? Yes, it's going to be a bow. I wanted a new one. I was a hunter back before I came to Mushan. I figured I might try my hand at it again. <laughs> the last two years have been rough. The harvest's dwindling more and more, so I thought I could hunt some... Sand beasts and, uh, help the food shortage. Walnut wood is dry and brittle, but you think it could be used for a bow? You know your stuff. Us mountain folk don't have the privilege of using sturdy wood, and I don't need this bow for fighting or killing, as long as I can use it to hunt. I thought you were making a grave marker. For Fang Xiao Xi. The hunter sets down his carving knife on a stool. His eyes reveal panic, but his movements are slow. 
he grimly rubs his hands, the corners of his lips curling down. So you know, you didn't leave the village after all. I was hoping my assumptions were wrong. You don't know how bad things are here. You don't have to tell me. I can already know what you want to say. I was planning to go right to the Elder, but after thinking it over, I'm much more concerned about something else. How does it feel to be a father declaring his own son dead? Shaping his grave marker with their own hands. I never imagined. You, you thought he died out there three years ago? No. 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 You can't. Even though she or she has caused so much trouble, you can't do this. Besides, who said he was dead? Uncle Feng, listen to me. You know how dire our situation is. We wouldn't be doing this if there was a better way. It's been three years. If Xiao Shi was still alive, he would have come back by now. He knows you live alone, that you need someone to look after you in your old age. Keep it simple. By using Xiao Xi's name, the money will pass through your hands first, so you get a share, and give the rest to the village. Consider it compensation for the both of you. The money will go through me first. I could use it to travel all kinds of places. <laughs> it's funny. I spent the first half of my life as a wandering hunter, in the wilderness, and after I got sick, I decided I'd do anything I could to leave that light behind. It was hard to save enough money to buy this plot of land in Mushan and to make a home for myself. And now, in the end, I'm leaving again. It's been three years. I have to find my boy. I don't know if I'll find him, or if I'll even make it back. Miss. No, a heroine like you deserves an even greater title. You brought Xiao Shi home, and you still care for his welfare. I'm grateful for that. But please, stay out of our lives from here on. He's caused so much trouble for the village, and it's and it wasn't easy for him to come home. If we cross the villagers again, we might not have a place to stay. The mandarins will be here in two days. Nothing can go wrong or the entire village will suffer. I've seen plenty of crazy business in Jiangnan and the lands beyond. You're trying to get money from these for the sake of the village and I have no intention or method of getting in the way of that. Good. <laughs> That's good to hear. After this is all over, the boy will get to stay in the village to live safe and sound. That's all I have ever wanted. <laughs> Will staying in the village really guarantee safety and peace? The villagers won't do anything to Xiao Xi. Yesterday they swore before their ancestor at the Yishan Temple, the clan el elder and all of them promised me. You'll take their word for it? <laughs> I'm sure you know Feng Xiao Xi's temperament. He won't go along with them. He'll insist on keeping his name, just as he did with your land, uh, your land those years ago. Or are you planning to keep him locked up forever? If you lose control of him and he ruins the whole plan, what will the villagers do then? <sighs> Evil, once summoned, does not stop at your request. You probably already know what I'm getting at. At the very least, we can wait until the day after tomorrow. You're his father, but you have no but you have nothing to handle this. What what are you going to do? Don't worry, I won't stand in your way, let alone expose your plans. Otherwise I would have sent Fang Xiao Shi 
to the authorities long ago, instead of bringing him back here. But since I was the one who brought him back, I have to ensure his safety. I can't see him come to harm, or it would be as if I hurt him myself. I won't be leaving the village for now. What are all these buttons for? I've pressed them so many times, but nothing's happening. How did that guy turn it on? You done yet? Huh? Calm down. I've almost figured it out, okay? You don't know how the camera works, and you're still hogging it. Let me have a try. You, you'll break it. I want to see the people inside arguing again. I didn't get a good look before it turned off. Let go. Uh, hello, Elder. Xiaoping hmm. and Xiaoan. Come on, hand it over. No use hiding it from me. Wasn't this supposed to be in my room? Who said you could mess with it? Uh, we've never seen anything like this before. We just wanted a closer look. You're so interested in it. Do you even know how to use it? Well, we managed to turn it on. You did? Yeah, a person appeared in this little box. Was that a movie? Please, have you ever seen one? Movies are performed by famous people in the nomadic cities on a big screen. But the person in there... Wasn't it the lady messenger who comes to the village sometimes? That boy... He wasn't alone. Well then, seems they concocted an entire plan and uh, <laughs> the the uh, dead body they found obviously had friends. And uh, they are probably about to arrive in the village and uh, oh boy, they will have fun with that. Anyway, this will be it for today's part. Next part should be up in uh, a day or two on the channel, so you won't wait too long and we shall finish off the story with the final three parts. Also, is it just me, or is this <laughs> this smaller and shorter side story using way more, way more uh, Chinese lingo <laughs> than uh, than even what Vernal Winds did? I swear, the list of words that I had to look up, uh, at least how to roughly pronounce, uh, is for this first part longer than for three three parts put together <laughs> for Vernal Winds. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, not, by the way, not all pron pronunciations of stuff that I went through are correct, obviously. I had to adjust a couple of things because I couldn't find proper pronunciation, so I went with whatever sounds the most likely of pronunciation there, but uh, I hope it's right. Uh, oh, and also the phrase that uh, that uh, Xiao Xi was uh, asking... Uh, Chubai to pro to say to him at one point is like a uh, it's pretty much like a goodbye like um what's the word I'm looking for like a, mm, goodbye between warriors potentially I can't remember what what it's actually but yeah it's 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 a very courteous goodbye essentially uh, but yeah anyway. That will be it for today's part, like I said. Uh, next time we shall finish this story, and uh, as always, if you've liked this video, please consider leaving a like. Uh, and uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. There's a lot more side stories like this on the channel, and uh, you might find something you enjoy or want to just refresh yourself on uh, that you've missed in the past or didn't have time to read. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, Bye-bye.